a girl in the corner with tear stains on her eyes from the places she's wandered and the shame she can't hide. She says, How did I get here? I'm not who I once was. I'm crippled by the fear of falling too far to love. Don't you know who you are? What has been done for you? Don't you know who you are? You are more than the choices that you made. You are more than the sun of your past mistakes. You are more than the problems you create. You've been remade. She tried. All the lies She tried to do better Then she's too weak to try Don't you know who you are? You are more than the choices that you made You are more than the sum of your past mistakes You are more than the problems you created You've been remade Thank you so much for joining us. We're so glad you're here. Today, we wrap up our series, Small Words, Big Meaning, with the word fear. I think it's probably something that all of us can relate to. We're going to hear from our good friend Dave Warg on this topic, and I'm really excited for you to hear from him. Let's worship. Greetings from Moccasin Lake up in the Chippewa National Forest in northern Minnesota. My wife Rachel and I are are fortunate enough to be able to practice our social distancing up here where I can grow a scraggly beard and fit right in with the guys up here. It's called the hermit look. <laughs> We're going to talk tonight about a simple word that has a big meaning, fear. A feeling that's been in our minds and hearts a lot lately. Now I grew up as a kid afraid a lot of the time. I remember the kids in the neighborhood calling me scaredy cat. Now, I don't know if they use that term anymore, but I was called that a lot. Well, they also called me a, a number of other names, but we won't go there tonight. <laughs> now, the, one of the reasons that I was a scaredy cat was that I wouldn't fight. If there was an argument, the guys always wanted to resolve it by punching each other, or in my case, getting punched. Come on, Warg. Put up your dukes. No, 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 no. I don't want to fight. Getting hurt was not my idea of a means of successful conflict resolution. Now, I also had a creative imagination. I believed that there was a man under my bed at night, and no matter how many times I looked under the bed to make sure he wasn't there before I turned out the light, I would 
be constantly afraid of that. And I, I, I begged my dad, please saw off the legs of my bed so I, he couldn't get under there. But for some reason, he didn't agree that that was a, a good way to resolve the problem. And as I grew older, my fears focused on the problems of life. School, relationships, jobs, relationships, health issues, relationships. Well, you get the idea. Of course, now, fears surround safety from the virus. Now, I'll be 70 in a few months. I'm overweight, I've got some lung issues. In other words, I'm at the risk category of those who are most vulnerable to COVID-19. Now, I was on the phone last week to a good friend who struggled with the virus for the last two months, and he described just a, a painful and very scary process of not being able to breathe and having a high fever, getting better, and then it getting worse again. And it was a, a constant nightmare for a long time. Now, fortunately, he's recovering, but many aren't. And die without the ability to even have their loved ones with them. It's, it's, it's just so scary. Then there are many who have lost their jobs and don't know how they're going to support their families. There's fear, fear everywhere. So what do we do? We can try to numb ourselves so we don't feel it with alcohol or drugs. We can try to distract ourselves and pretend it's not there through work or other activities, sports, social media, TV, and other diversions. The problem is that numbing or distracting doesn't last, and it often makes things worse. One of the prayers that I've relied upon over the years is what's called the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Now, when it comes to the coronavirus, we need the courage to change the things that we can. We need to keep our distance from others. We need to wear a mask when appropriate, wash our hands. In other words, changing our habits to keep us as safe as we can. Now, to me, the most difficult part about having serenity or having peace is to believe that things aren't worst-case scenario, but rather believe in a peaceful and a loving outcome. Now, Jesus tells us over and over and over again that faith in God is what conquers fears. Faith that he will protect us, faith that he will, he will care for us in this life and the next. It's all about faith over fear. Now let me re repeat that. Faith over fear. Jesus' disciples dealt with fear constantly. They knew they, they, they could be, and many of them were, killed for their beliefs. And to calm their fears, Jesus had the simple answer. Believe in me. Two well-known lessons occurred on the Sea of Galilee during storms when the disciples were crossing in their boat. Now apparently the Sea of Galilee is very deep and surrounded by hills, which subjects the sea to, to sudden windstorms causing really high waves, like up to 20 feet that could easily swamp a boat. Now, in, in one such instance, it's described in, in, in the Gospels, one of these storms erupted when Jesus and his disciples were crossing the sea, and Jesus was taking a nap. Now, the boat was getting tossed about and taking on water, and Jesus is sleeping. Well, the disciples, obviously fearing for their lives, they woke Jesus up, screaming, We're going to drown! Save us! And Jesus looked at them and said, Calm down. Why are you so afraid? I am with you. You have so little faith. And he stood up and calmed the seas. Another time, another storm, and this was just after Jesus fed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. 
He sent the disciples on ahead in the boat to cross the sea when he went up into the hills to pray. In the middle of the night, another violent storm broke out. So in the dark, with huge waves rolling everywhere, Jesus walked about three and a half miles across the sea to the boat. Well, the disciples started screaming, thinking he was a ghost. And Jesus once again calmed them. It's all right. I'm here. There's no reason to be afraid. The disciple Peter said, well, if it's really you, tell me to come to you by walking on water. Jesus said, all right, come to me. And Peter began walking toward him on the water until he looked down at the waves, became terrified, and of course, then he sank. Jesus pulled him up and again said, where is your faith? Why do you doubt me? The clear message in these experiences is that just as Jesus took care of his disciples by calming the water and their fears, he will also take care of us as long as we have faith and trust in him. Faith over fear. They aren't just words. They're the truth. King David tells us in Psalm 23 that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because God is with me. In Psalm 27, he writes that the Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord protects me from danger. So why should I tremble? Pastor Lloyd, in a devotion he gave a few weeks ago, he related a story written by Gerhard Frost, a former theology professor at Luther Seminary. Frost depicts a father sitting in the, at the kitchen table planning his family vacation and trying to figure out the best route for his family to take. The table is full of maps and brochures and guidebooks to help him determine the best itinerary. So as he studies all these materials set forth before him, his young son crawls up on his lap, snuggles in, looks at all the information laid out on the table, looks up at his dad and says, I'm so glad that all I have to do is go along. <laughs> That's the mark of a trusting child. And this is the childlike trust we need to have in God the Father as we face the fears we all experience. The ability to let go and let God turns on our desires away from fear of the future and focuses on the truth that God is sufficient even when our circumstances are not. May you experience God's love, care, and protection in these troubling times. Stay safe, and God be with you. Thanks for your message, Dave. It's always great to hear from you and to have you share your message with us. Please join me in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather as your people to worship and to learn. We give praise for those who are willing to share their talents and gifts as part of our worship. Dear Jesus, we ask for your presence with all who are struggling with health issues, specifically Steve, Roma, Jeannie, and Johnny. Please walk with those who are grieving the death of a loved one. We pray specifically for the families of Roger Youngquist, Earl Molstrom, and Larry Roach. Give comfort and peace to all who are in grief at this time. We also want to lift up in prayer those who are ill with COVID-19, those who are struggling in ICUs, and the families and friends of those who have died from this coronavirus. Jesus, as Christians, Help us to stand in faith as people of forgiveness, caring, and love. You don't simply say love one another, but also love your enemy. You came to show that your love is for all the people of our hurting world. You did not allow anything to keep you from reaching out with life-changing, active love. Lead us, Lord, to try and love like you. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please uh, join us also for worships on Sunday. You can find um, any of our worship services, services as well as other material on our Our Savior's Lutheran website, Facebook page, or YouTube. We welcome you to worship with us, really, at any time. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Oh, I've heard thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love, a dead of night, then you tell me that you're pleased in that I never Who I am, who I am.